All right. Uh, we also wanted to talk G1, uh, specifically Kenny Omega Evil from the August 2nd show. Great uh, match. Uh, yeah, I watched it this morning, uh, primarily because I heard Dave and Brian on, on Observer Radio talking about it. And the the issue with the one V-trigger knee that may or may not have knocked Evil out. But more importantly, I saw and was irritated and actually unfollowed yet again because he annoys me so much, Disco Inferno's comments on it. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Well, so first of all, so Kenny did not knock him out with the knee. So just to be clear, and I think that um, what you're hearing here today on this issue is something you will not hear anywhere else in wrestling, whether it's on on Dave and Brian's site or on any other show on the Jericho Network or anywhere. Because what you're getting, you know, through my family connections with Kenny, uh, what you're getting is the real story about what really happened. And uh, obviously I'm in the know in Japan. I've got a network of stooges over there. So um, what for Disco or anyone else to say, oh, Kenny knocked him out is just not accurate. For Disco, um, and I, you know, I thought we were done talking about him, but for Disco to be making any comments related to the great Kenny Omega is, I don't even know. It's, it's like, you know, Disco Inferno, Kenny Omega. It's like, it's like Kenny Omega and Disco Inferno is like comparing ice cream to horse manure. Yeah. And to be clear, I don't, I don't have the, the tweet in front of me, but he basically, referenced the knockout and basically did an I told you so almost like he was jubilant with the fact that he believed this guy got knocked out because he got to be you know right and I I realize he probably gets to be right very seldom and this one is again another case of him not being right but to take joy in what you thought was the misfortune of somebody getting potatoed and knocked out is ignorant And to pass judgment on a worker who is, like you say, so far above you, again, ignorant. And and I just find it infuriating that someone who, for the most part, was a song and dance man comedy comedy character, and he admits that, he patterned himself after the honky-tonk man, to then be so outspoken against some of the highest level pro wrestling on the planet today, and to criticize a guy who's busting his hump, what, 10, 11 days in a row doing pay-per-view main event quality matches, that even if he had knocked him out, and again, you talked to Kenny, so you would know he didn't, but even if he had, it's like, shit happens. When you're working at that high level and you're busting your hump every night, it's like, it could happen. And if it did, it would be unfortunate, but not the end of the world. We don't have to, well, let's stop doing strikes now. That it's just such an absurd comment. And the fact that Disco seemed to take joy in the fact that I get to be right. Yay. You know, damn, this great worker is just so goddamn ignorant. Yeah. And I think that if you watch it, like I could understand why Dave or Brian, when they watched it, might think, well, maybe he was out of it. Um, But I think if you if you look at the one winged angel, that's not an easy move, Lance. And you would know this. That's not an easy move to put on a 245, 250 pound guy. You know, Kenny Omega is probably 220. So you know, you're basically putting a guy on your shoulders. You've got to, you've got to lift him up and you've got to, um, balance him too. And then pull him down safely into, into a move that, uh, is not easy to execute. So, um, sometimes Kenny, after he hits a knee and the crowd is up, he'll really go for it. Like he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, pussyfoot around with it. And I think on the first one, um, he slipped trying to get him up. So then, they had to kind of improvise and go for, for a pin after a knee. And, uh, and Red Shoes stopped his count. Red Shoes is the referee for people that don't watch New Japan because of the fact that Evil's outside arm had broken the plane, plane of the bottom rope, which kind of killed the drama. So now I think Kenny felt like, from what I saw anyway, that he had to build it back up, throw some more knees to the body, and one more standing knee. And then go again for his finish because they had slipped on the finish before. And I guess the timing was off. And, you know, a guy like Evil, he's going to give a little bit of a jump to help Kenny press him up onto his shoulders. And the the little jump was mistimed. And Kenny basically had to, had to deadlift him, which made it look more awkward. Like, well, the guy's not helping. He's out on his feet and Kenny's still lifting him up. 
So really, really. It's Hughesy. Hello. So really, really silly. I mean, that's what happened. And it doesn't make for as good a narrative for a fool like Glenn Gilberti. You know, but if you go back and watch the match, there was a spot when Kenny was supposed to lift him up before this supposed knee strike. And the timing was off there and they had to improvise. So was he out cold for that too? I mean, come on. So that's the real story. And sorry to disappoint uh, people because I know Disco has made a bit of a shtick. And it's probably not a shtick actually because I know he believes this about criticizing New Japan, saying that there's going to be all these head injuries because of the way guys deliver forearms. So this is his shtick. He's, he doesn't like the fact that people say New Japan is the best pro wrestling in the world. He says, why is it the best pro wrestling? Because they stiff each other. I mean, so, and as you pointed out, he really has no base of knowledge to comment or critique on this level of wrestling. You know, this is like Carrot Top critiquing Richard Pryor, Chris Rock, like it's just shouldn't be done. Yeah. And the other thing that's absurd is commenting on that their forearms are too stiff when you've never been there and never taken them. It reminds me when I went to I, I did a Ring of Honor show in I think it was Toronto and it was Kevin Steena, uh, now Kevin Owens and I against Chris Hero and Davey Richards. And I remember I think it was Richards and might have been Roderick Strong commenting how they hated when new guys came in and tried to get jobs in Ring of Honor because they all thought everyone in Ring of Honor worked really stiff and they hated all these guys stiffing them so badly that they were just really good and worked with each other a lot that all their stuff looked really stiff, but it wasn't. And people, primarily because people watch, oh man, they're stiffing each other, they're knocking them out. And they're like, we're not. And these guys come in and think that's what we're doing, so they do it back. And for Disco, who, again, I believe when he was on the show mentioned his one trip to Japan was for a USO tour or something, and he worked Americans, to have never worked in Japan and certainly never worked (laughs) in New Japan with these guys, to be criticizing them because they're too stiff is absurd if you've never been in there. No, and it's like, you know, it's uh, it's like, are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? I mean, if, look, you used to throw a hell of a super kick. And if I was a mark, I might think you were stiffing people with it. Um, I can't think of anything Disco did that looked very solid, so I can't make a comment. But, you know, I used to throw a Harley race knee to the forehead. Some people used to say, oh, did you catch him with that knee? It's like, ask him. And the guy goes, no, he never touched me. That is, and this is actually Disco's whole point, that is the whole point of the business, is to make something look like it's killing you without it actually killing you. So the fact that he is watching the forearm or the knee or whatever and going, oh, my God, it's a shoot. They're they're stiffing each other Um, where he doesn't actually know. And I can tell you that it's not a shoot. Newsflash. I can tell you that in most cases they're not stiffing each other. They just know how to throw those things. You're getting worked, kid. Sorry. I mean, that's it's you're being exposed and you're making yourself sound like a fool by getting on your your soapbox and criticizing the greatest wrestler in the world, Kenny Omega. It reminds me, when I was in WCW, uh, I was working with Bill DeMott a lot, and he had some concussion issues, and the trainer was always really concerned. And Bill and I would always do the super kick spot. And I remember at one point in time, the trainer got mad and went to Bill. It's like, how many times do you think you can get kicked in the head like that? And Bill just looked at him. He's like, for the rest of my life, he doesn't touch me. And the trainer went, oh, okay then. And it's like, unless you're in there, you don't know. And that's where, too, you'll get people that ask. It's like, who throws the best punch? Who throws the best elbow? And I'm like, well, until I've taken them, I don't know. Similarly, No, Lance, sorry, I was just going to say, like, as a trainer, and you're the preeminent trainer in the world right now, as a trainer, does it concern you that he has these viewpoints and he's supposedly teaching kids to wrestle? Well, I, I would have been equally of concern before his comments because I've, I've seen his body of work. But the, the, to, on that serious note, though, with that, I'm amazed that someone who works at a wrestling school would basically take the public view that all of the current popular best stuff in wrestling that fans like and I'm assuming prospective students like – are stuff you should never do. It's like, well, if he's not going to 
be willing to teach you this and quite probably not able to teach you this, why would you go to him? Like it's, it's it's same with his view on women's wrestling. He thinks they should all just go back to strippers and wrestling in bras and thongs. It's like, well, that's a hell of a way to promote your your wrestling school, Disco. Well, you know, Disco is not to be disrespectful, a moron, a mental defective, and and you know, in other news, water's wet and the sky is blue. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, let's move on. That's certainly something we can agree on.